Hey, 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 guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here, back with another Hyperscape video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best weapons and hacks in Hyperscape for Season 1. So in case you haven't heard the news, Hyperscape is now available to play for free on Xbox, PS4, PC, and with this sort of uh, update to Hyperscape with Season 1, we also got a small patch as well, which changed around the balance of the weapons a little bit, so I thought what I'd do is make an updated guide, uh, tips and tricks, tier list sort of video of what currently are the best weapons and hacks. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this video and uh, let's break it down, shall we? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over to the training range in Hyperscape. This is the area that you start off in, the sort of tutorial zone. Um, a lot of people ask me, how do I get to the training range, Baggins? Because I guess it's not immediately obvious from this main menu. So what you want to do is go towards this play section in the middle, then just turn to the right in between sort of the battle pass and the play area, and you'll see the training zone back here. So let's jump into the training zone and pick up some of the best weapons and hacks in the game. All right, so here we are in the training range, and I've actually taken a little bit of time to sort of organize some of the weapons and hacks out into the little piles as well, because I thought it would save time, and you guys just really want to know, like, Baggins, how do I wreck people in this game? What do I need to be using right now? So in terms of weapons, I've made three different piles here. So these are the good weapons, in my opinion. These are, like, the, the best stuff, the ones that you want to be looking for. You will notice that two of them I've deliberately put at max fusion. The rest uh, aren't, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then we have the sort of mid-tier weapons just here the Komodo, the Skybreaker, and the Hexfire. And then we have just the bad weapons, which I wouldn't recommend picking up. So we got Salvo, uh, Dragonfly, which is a shame. The new weapon goes in this pile, and the D-Tap as well. So... Uh, let's start off with the best stuff, shall we? Going from right to left, we have the Harpy, which is the Rapid Fire SMG. This weapon is good at pretty much any rarity. And uh, although this is going to come from a PC standpoint, this is somebody playing with a mouse and keyboard, as you can see here from my webcam. Uh, I do believe these weapons largely are going to be good with a controller as well. Not so sure about the sniper rifle. You guys will have to let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, but I have heard that the shotgun is as good on controller as it is with a mouse and keyboard. But yeah, the Harpy. Very, very effective weapon. Does a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Uh, it did get a bit of a nerf, but I still think it is strong uh, for sure. And you can, you know, just at any rarity, it's going to be powerful. But obviously, if you get all the way to max fusion, you get that increased magazine size. And at the final fusion, you also get the damage bonus as well, which uh, is going to help a lot with uh, taking out the enemies pretty fast. I think you can kill uh, two enemies with just one clip. So pretty nice stuff there with the Hoppy. Generally a pretty solid weapon. Got to be better up close than it will be from range. Uh, the Ripper is kind of like the Hoppy's big brother at this point. I think it actually may be one of the strongest weapons in the game right now. My understanding is it's also very strong on console because of the aim assist shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, just kind of like the the Hoppy, another great weapon for tracking. It's got a bit of a little bit of a slower time to kill, but it has a better effective range as its recoil and spread isn't as wild with the Hoppy. And again, at any rarity, it's going to you know be usable. But if you increase it over rarity, you get the increased magazine size and then again just like with the hoppy you get the bonus damage at full fusion so obviously if you get the chance you want to pick it up at full fusion because it does really shred then but yeah not a bad idea to just pick up a default uh ripper off the ground when you can find one now Going on to the next weapon, we have the Protocol Sniper Rifle. Now, I don't really use this weapon much myself, but I do know in the hands of a skilled player, this is one of the most devastating weapons in the game because it's one of the pretty much only weapons, like, if we ignore the Mammoth, the only weapon that can uh, one-shot somebody in the game very reliably. It's because it does uh, a full fusion. At a headshot, it is a one-shot kill. It does 120 damage, which is enough to kill anybody unless they are, you know, using invulnerability. So, yeah, um, the one-shot consistency of this weapon in the hands of somebody with very good aim it makes it very, very powerful. And that's pretty much it. At other rarities, it doesn't one-shot, so it's not as strong. But if you get the full fusion, then the protocol becomes a beast of a weapon. Same kind of reason with the Mammoth. There was a, like, a buff that we saw recently to the Mammoth where... Um, they increased the damage across all rarities, all fusions, and then they decided that's a little bit too silly, but they still kept the damage bonus at the full fusion. So it does five, every every pellet of the shotgun does five damage across all rarities, apart from the final fusion, where it does seven damage per pellet. And that is a significant damage increase to the point where the legendary mammoth really just destroys people. I mean, you can do serious amounts of damage with this thing uh, just by pretty much like looking at the enemy, you know, it's, it's, it's not really a whole lot of effort to uh, get this damage out here. And with so many shots in it as well, 
Uh, what are we at? If we go to max, it's nine. Yeah, nine shots. So weapon's pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I don't know what else to say. If you know this, the effectiveness at which I'm able to uh, take out these stationary bots here isn't impressive enough, then I don't know what will impress you guys. But yeah, Mammoth definitely one to be looking out for. Um, very good in conjunction with certain hacks, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, fully fused Mammoth. Again, just like with the sniper rifle, the one-shot capability. I, I, in fact, we didn't even show the one-shot there. If you just look at the head of somebody and then pull the trigger, it can do 120 damage as well. So, yeah, nasty weapon there. And then finally, one of the last great weapons is the Riot 1. Now, I'm not sure how this weapon actually performs with a controller, but I do know on PC it slaps. Um, this is a, one of the weird weapons because it doesn't sort of scale its magazine size like with most of these. Instead, on every rank you get bonus damage. So obviously the higher, the rarity, the riot, the better. But even like a default riot can do good damage. Um, right now it just feels like it's a strictly better version of the dragonfly since you can hit people from range pretty consistently for large amounts of damage. So yeah, um, riot one to, a good one to look out for, especially if you're somebody who likes to play Valorant and likes to click people as opposed to track people which you would do with the Hoppy and Ripper. All right, we'll quickly move on to the mid-tier weapons, and I'm going to make a special note of the hex fire here because I know there's probably going to be some people in the comments down below saying, Baggins, are you crazy? The hex fire is the most insane weapon in the game. On PC, it really doesn't see that much use. Uh, I do think that it is a solid weapon, but I, right now I feel like the Ripper and Harpy do better than the hex fire. Maybe, again, because of the nature of the controller's aim assist, hex fire just sees so much more use. It has 150 ammo in its magazine, so easily one of the highest capacity magazines in the game. You can just, you know, hold down the fire button for your heart's content and, you know, kind of just go AFK and come back. So I think because of that, um, with the combined with the aim assist, you know, maybe this is why the weapons use so much use on console. I don't know, uh, but I do know that in the same sort of sense, when the game first came out on PC and the technical test, the hex fire was considered one of the most powerful weapons. You can go and there's a video that I. I've got up there, which you can check out where I say the hex fire is really, really strong. Since then, like the meta evolved and people figured out other weapons to use. So maybe uh, console is just copying what happened on PC. That'd be kind of interesting if that's the case. Um, but yeah, potentially we're just seeing history repeating itself where people say that the hex fire is really strong when it's actually, it's okay. Uh, we have the Skybreaker and the Komodo. Honestly, the Komodo is a really, really good weapon. It may be moving up to here soon. Uh, this is just sort of my like initial assessment of what I think the weapons are at right now. This is all just in my opinion, so if you guys find something that works for you, by all means, go for it. But yeah, Komodo and Skybreaker kind of form in a similar sort of function where you want to be shooting people from a distance to get better damage. In case you don't know the way this works, you have to be standing, let's say from this distance, we do 29 damage, but if I get up closer to this guy, like from here, only nine damage. So the Komodo's damage actually kind of scales to a distance where you get rewarded for hitting people from further away. So 23, 22, and then once you get up close, it's significantly less damage. So um, yeah, you want to be trying to land the Komodo shots from about this range in order to make sure you get some form of damage any closer, and it's just not really going to do anything. Same with the Skybreaker, basically. We need to gonna get, we're going to need to get a little bit more ammo for this thing here, but if I hit this uh, bot from about this range, it's going to be 40 damage. However, if I move closer, like I did with the Komodo, and then shoot him again, only 21 damage and if I'm right up in his face it's uh was that 12 I think that said 13 so yeah definitely uh, want to be using these weapons from range if you can and that's kind of why they get you know they fall down in tier a little bit just because of that range limitation all of these weapons you could argue that you could use up close as well as from a distance so that's why I put these here and the hex fire like I say it's just kind of weaker than the ripper and Hompy, so it deserves to be in this tier over here as well. Finally, we have the worst weapons in the game. The Salvo is kind of just a worst version of the Komodo. Um, if you are in an outdoor area, it's super hard to land shots with this thing. Like, it's only going to be really good inside a building because you can bounce it off of the walls and then bank it into them. But even then, it's not super reliable to do this. It's had quite a few nerfs, the Salvo. Um, they did do a recent buff to increase the, da the damage again, but... Yeah, I, I just don't think the Salvo is really in uh, that much of a good spot right now. Pretty much pick it up at the start of the game if you're in a building with somebody and you need to sort of juggle them around. But after that, I would swap it out for, you know, any one of these weapons over here. Then we have the D-Tap. It's, uh, it's just bad. Don't don't use the D-Tap. I can't even pick it up. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me go grab a fresh one. Where is the... Where do they put this weapon? 
Yeah, so the, the trade-off of the D-Tap, in case you guys don't know, it is a pistol that automatically locks onto people. I know there's got to be like a couple of people in the comments saying, Beggars, the D-Tap's insane, you can never miss any shots, but it, the, honestly, the damage is just so low on this thing compared to other weapons. It just takes so long to kill people, and I know you can headshot with it, but uh, yeah, it's just it just easily gets blown out of the water by something like the Ripper right now. So if you have even remotely good aim, there's no reason to use the D-Tap other than just for like memes and challenge videos, so... And then finally, we have the Dragonfire, the new weapon in the game. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, it just feels like it's a weaker version of the Riot right now. Um, you'd be much better off using the Riot in the same range that you want to use the Dragonfly. Haven't really found an effective use for it yet. The uh, damage per bullet just seems to be pretty low, and it's you know it's hard to consistently shoot people who are moving through the air. Obviously, it's going to be a bit easier to do on these bots here who are just standing still, but if we imagine they're flying through the air and stuff, if you land like one in every other shot and it's only doing 18 damage, it just really isn't enough there, and even if you get it to max rank, I don't think we're going to see that much of a damage increase, if I'm not mistaken. We only get the damage boost at the final fusion. And now we're doing 21 damage per shot. So, yeah, it's not the worst weapon in the world, but I just think it is, like, any one of these weapons here are better, and probably any one of these weapons are better as well, so therefore it falls into this sort of poo-poo category with the salvo and the d-tap so that is the weapons guys uh, we'll go over and jump into the hacks now okay so in a similar sort of fashion we did with the weapons we've got uh we've pre-selected our hacks here of what i think are currently like the best ones in the game right now so we have slam i have deliberately put these at legendary value because although slam and heal are still good at other values this is the one the value that you really want to be seeing these uh, abilities at because slam gets a damage bonus when you fully fuse it out and heal also gets a heal bonus while you fully fuse it out as well whereas the rest of them is just a cooldown increase uh, regardless of what rarity they are so obviously fuse into them but it doesn't really matter too much on these whereas these ones do receive specific bonuses for getting them to max fusion so yeah uh the often combo that i'm running these days is slam and magnet i think this is a really strong combo slam is just really good because it acts as a form of movement but it can also deal damage to the enemy as well 30 damage to be specific which is again you get the 30 at the max i think if if we're not uh, at max i think it's only 20 damage i'll double check that for you guys Yeah, there we go, the 20 damage. So you want to be getting that extra damage bonus if you can with the slam. It's kind of hard to show the value of heal here. I think it's something that people don't understand about heal, and I'll, I'll try and showcase it here. So if I put it down, you can see what I'm getting healed because these like, uh, sort of healing symbols are popping up at the bottom of the screen. So you know you're out of range of a heal. Say, for example, if I put it up in the sky like this, I'm not getting healed by it right now. Like, that, that's just not healing me. But if I try and do something like this when it comes off cooldown, See if we can put it on the edge of here. There you go. So you see, although this is like quite, a, you know, a few meters higher than me, I'm still getting hit by the heal. So this actually allows you to, what you can do is run into a building that has multiple floors and you can put the heal a floor above you and then slide down the stairs and hide in a corner. And your opponent's going to be thinking like, oh, you're standing next to the heal. I'll just go to where the heal is. And you're not. You're actually hiding down below, but still receiving the benefits of the heal. And this can often, like, uh, confuse opponents as well. Because you can go for a 1v1 and have a secret heal above you that the opponent can't see. And then they're thinking that they can easily win the 1v1 because you're low in health. And, you know, you're not, you're not healing, but you actually are healing. So a little bit of mind games, a little bit of trickery you can do with the heal that not everybody is aware of. So maybe uh, that's a, a reason, a justification as to why the heal is good. Because I know a few people say, Baggins, I don't think heal is that good. It is pretty strong. Uh, Magnus, really, really good right now. It just It's it's a, it's the only form of CC crowd control in the game. It allows you to sort of pull enemies towards you, pull them away. Makes it really easy to line up uh, shotgun shots. We talked about this a little bit earlier. But shotgun is uh, really strong in conjunction with the magnet right now. Because you can sort of like, hey, I want you to come over here right in front of my shotgun barrel. And then you just kill them like that so yeah works the same with the hoppy as well you can pull somebody in and then just you know unload a hoppy clip into them for a lot of damage so yeah magnet very very strong we also have teleport now i don't know if you would run teleport and slam at the same time but you can run teleport in place of slam i, I would recommend pretty much always having at least one movement ability there is going to be situations where you know you could try and run like invisibility and armor and just try and turtle and stay alive sorry i, I keep calling it armor it's invulnerability these days but yeah, uh, I don't think running these both at the same time are worth it, but typically what I'll do is I'll have Teleport in my first slot right. as a form of movement, or I'll have Slam in my first slot as a form of movement, but also bonus damage, which is kind of why I think Slam is better than Teleport. 
Um, and then the secondary, I'll pick up one of these here. So, for instance, uh, a, a build here that's pretty slippery is you can run Teleport, and then you can run Invisibility. And you know, you're fighting with somebody, uh, they get you pretty low, you can just blink and then turn invisible. And it makes it very hard because they can't see exactly where you went invisible because you just blinked out of their sight line and then you turned invisible. So, and again, you could run uh, any one of these hacks in combination with the teleport as well to be, you know, just nice and slippery. The teleport is just there as a form of movement, and then the secondary hack is, you know, what's going to be used as your escape. So, if we do have some honorable mentions with uh, Invulnerable, you can also use Invulnerable in the sort of same way that you would use Invisibility. The downside of using Invulnerability instead of Invisibility is your opponent can still see you. So, you could kind of make an argument that when you're invisible, you're not going to take damage. I mean, your opponent can kind of guess where you are. But generally, you're not going to take damage as long as you're, you're moving kind of like not in a straight line. Whereas, in Invulnerability, you won't take damage, but your opponent can see where you're running to. So, yeah, I kind of just feel like uh, invisibility is kind of better than invulnerability. There's going to be situations where it's not, but generally, that's why I haven't included invulnerability in the list of hacks that I have over here. Let's see. Outside of that, reveal is pretty bad. Wall is kind of poop. Mine got nerfed a lot. Uh, ball is pretty much a meme. Shockwave you could run if you like to. If you're an aggressive player and you want something for some extra damage on top of your slam, you could run a sort of max slam, max shockwave. It is worth mentioning as well that if you have two people on your team and both you and your friend are running slam and shockwave, if you both land your slam at the same time, that's 60 damage combined. And then if you both hit your shockwave at the same time, that's another 60 damage combined, which is 120 damage in total, which of course, as we know, is enough to kill a player. So yeah, you could form some sort of synergy with a teammate and do like double slam, double shockwave shenanigans. Another benefit of the shockwave as well, we should have talked about in a previous video, but we'll just show it while we're here as well, is you can use it as a form of aim training. While you're in the uh, sort of uh, training range here, you can use the shockwave to boop the enemy up into the air and then just try and shoot the bot back down. So yeah, if you don't want to play like with any particular aim trainer, aim lab, or Kovacs or something, you know, you just want to try and practice in the game, but without actually going into a live match, you can just shockwave the bot and then try and go for some headshots while it's in the air. Or you can miss if you suck like me. You know, all of those options are available, so. Yeah, I'll take it. Close enough. <laughs> all right, guys, this has been my uh, tips and tricks, uh, my weapons guide to hyperscape. I don't know, maybe we'll play some gameplay after this, or maybe I'll decide that this video is long enough in itself that we don't need gameplay to show it. Uh, I, we'll see. You guys will get to see <laughs> when I decide to edit this together. But um, as a reminder, guys, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please go ahead and leave a like. Helps these videos get discovered on YouTube, which obviously helps me and helps other players out there. Um, if you want more Hyperscape content, you want more Baggins, you want more stuff like this, go ahead and click subscribe. And also, as a reminder, we are live on Twitch pretty much every single day. So if you want to tune in live, max out your battle pass, uh, ask some questions, play some viewer games, stuff like that, uh, feel free to drop in on the stream. I'll put links to that in the description down below. But yeah, that's been this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next one.